Hello and welcome back to the series Java Script for Testers. I'm Bushra and in this video we are going to learn what callbacks, promises and async awaits are, their purpose and how to use them. So without further ado, let's get it started. So JavaScript typically reads and executes your code line by line. So if you have something like this, we have a function print having console.log. We're calling our print function thrice, passing three different strings. We could as well have three different functions doing three different things. We are using one single function for simplicity. The important thing to note here is that we want start to be followed by printing something which should be followed by finish. Okay, so let's run this. The standard expected output, right? This is synchronous code. Now let me write a synchronous code. Now this is same with just one difference. We have used set timeout. Set timeout takes two parameters. The first is a function and second is a timeout value in milliseconds. And this is how it works. It will wait for the timeout value you specified and then it will execute the function. So here console.log this would be executed after some random amount of time. Now what output do you expect? Same as what we got with the synchronous code? Well, let's run and see. No, this isn't the same. Let's run it a couple of times more. Well, we get different output each time. Now, that's a problem because I need start to come first, then print something and then finish. That's the flow I need. Um, uh, think of it like printing something is my main function and start is my setup method which should run before printing something and finish is my teardown method which needs to run only after printing something has completed. But because these are asynchronous functions, the order in which the output would be received can't be predicted. It is important to understand that each function gets executed in order. That is, they are invoked in order that we have specified. But the set timeout is random. So different for each of them. The functions won't wait for the previous function to complete its execution before they can begin theirs. So say this gets invoked and the timeout value is 10 seconds. So JavaScript won't wait for it to finish. It will go ahead and invoke this and say the timeout value is 2 seconds this time. And then JavaScript will proceed to this and say timeout value is 5 seconds. So what do you think the output would be like? Would it be start printing something, finish? No, it would be printing something, finish, and then start. That is based on which completes first. I hope you are following. So, in order to achieve the flow we need, we need to use either callback or promise or async await. Let's start with callbacks. Callbacks are the earliest and most straightforward solution. Let's see how they can fix our issue. Let's see what's happening here. So we have added a new parameter callback to our function. Callback is a function. And when the function print is done, it will run the callback function. Okay, 
So here we have passed the next function we would like to execute as an argument to this function. So the concept is really simple. We pass the function we want to perform next as an argument to the previous function. The function we pass as an argument is called callback function. This callback function gets executed when the function we have passed it in has completed its execution. So this will start its execution only after this has completed its execution. Let's run and see what result we get. That is exactly what we wanted to achieve. Now, there's a problem with callbacks. When your chain of callbacks increase, like here we have three levels, you can continue to increase it further. This gets messy really fast and it leads to the infamous callback hell problem. Basically, the code is very difficult to read and maintain. And so to deal with callback hell problem, promises were introduced. So promises try to fix the nesting problem. Let's see how. So this is how we use promises. The code is easier to read and faster to run. Instead of calling the callback function, we are now returning a promise. A promise can have one of three states, pending, resolve, or reject. Pending means the function hasn't completed its execution yet. Resolved is when function has completed its execution successfully. And reject is when there was an error. So if this gets executed successfully, then this gets invoked. And if it executes successfully, then this would get invoked. Let's run this. Perfect. It gets the job done. So promises help us write better, much cleaner code. That's great. But wait until you see async await. So, our print function is exactly the same. But what has changed is how we are calling them. We have wrapped them in a function. The function is prepended with a sync keyword. And each time we are calling the method, we have a wait prepended to it. I'm sure you'll appreciate how much readable this code is. It almost looks and feels like synchronous code. Let's run this. Excellent. It works as expected. The code is much simpler to understand. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like, share and subscribe to the channel.